We're at the Riverside Barbecue Centre. And Andrew, what are you going to cook for us today? Well, I've got this amazing bit of pork belly. Uh, and the lovely thing One of about, my favourites. It is just genius. Uh, and what's lovely about this, I went literally five minutes up the road from here a little while ago. Uh, I met Ivor and John at G Pickett Family Butchers. And we've got a fantastic bit of pork belly here. And they are brilliant butchers. Yeah, really and, good. And this is really important. Whenever you can, you should be supporting your local butcher, your local baker, and getting yeah. all your ingredients. I've no problem with the supermarket at all if you need to go there. But let's keep these things going. Because these guys were amazing. Gave me exactly what I wanted. If we don't keep them going, they're not going to be there for much longer. Exactly. So we, you know, we support them heavily here. Exactly right. So we've got this lovely bit of pork belly. And we're going to really blast this on the, on the barbecue to get that crackling going. And then reduce the temperature right down yeah. and do it low and slow. Proper barbecue. Yeah. At the same time, we're going to be making this really delicious. It's a cider gravy. We've got all these this celery, carrots, onions, and this lovely British cider here. And we're going to make this lovely cider gravy to go Do we with get that. to drink some of that? I've got a couple of spare ones here. Right, lovely. We are going to have about four hours where we don't have to do anything at all. We need to be steady. Yeah, so we'll, have, we'll have just one, yeah. I think. Um, okay, so that is going to be what we're doing, and it is going to be delicious. Okay, so what are we going to cook on? We're going to cook on this One Touch 57 Premium. Fantastic product. I love this product. I cook on it all the time. I love gas as well, but I love this product even more. It's brilliant. Nice charcoal. Fire lighters, already been placed in there. And this is the Weber Fire Lighters. Nice and easy to light. Yeah, as always, it's about quality, isn't it? If you get like a, a really cheap fire lighter, it doesn't yeah, work as well. Just right. Every single time this is yeah, going to work, isn't yeah. it? Nice little lighter from Weber. Nice and easy. Straight away. Yeah, and they, and they do light very quickly. There you go, job done. I've already filled the chimney starter full with the briquettes. These briquettes are brilliant. Um, last four to six hours and they really maximum heat. You know, you can go out and buy cheap ones out there. Just not worth it. Yeah, don't it's bother. It's well worth its money. We just leave that now for about 20 minutes and that'll be fine. Now, <clears throat> do you want to cook on direct heat or direct heat? Uh, for this pork dish, indirect I'm, heat, sorry. I want to do indirect for this one, yeah. yeah. These chimney starters are absolutely brilliant, aren't they? Oh yeah, you, you can't, if you're going to have a charcoal barbecue, you've got to have a chimney starter. It makes life so much easier. And then when you're controlling which way you want to cook, whether it's direct heat or indirect heat, you simply pick it up with a pair of gloves and place it either side or in the middle. It's superb. And I've noticed a couple of things uh, I just wanted to kind of talk about. First one thing I've noticed is that you've got this right down on the charcoal grate. Yeah. Is that a kind of bit of a safety tip? Well, I like it from a safety point of view. Some people like to put it on the top, but I like it on the safe, safety point of view that it's down there, it's out the way, and it gets a good draft coming up as well. So you can almost see the flames. That's been going for about two minutes. You can almost see the flames coming up through it already. It's really driving that um, heat all around it right up through the middle exactly very quickly the other thing i've noticed as well is you've got the coals for this case right up to the top that's because we want to get a really high uh, temperature we've, we've got to be at 500 for that for the crackling haven't we so yeah, it's really get be that really intense going. heat and then drop it back down where we can shut the vents down a little bit and reduce that heat down because it's going to be a long slow cook isn't it so exactly so that's kind of good in terms of just to, to start with but if you wanted to do a kind of a, a roast in temperature 180 200 where would yeah, you be on about, here? about three quarters but don't forget the tip is with this is that you know with these briquettes they they are so intense in heat so if you're doing just a couple of burgers or something just put a quarter of a chimney starter in there and it's going to work and you don't waste any of the charcoal exactly this is brilliant and also if you've got the one briquettes of, in this case yeah exactly if you've got one of the smaller barbecues of course they make a, a little mini version of the chimney yeah. starter as well don't they yeah and that's just for the small ones so yeah. you like you go anywhere any of those type something of something like barbecues. a smoky joe yeah smoky joe that. yeah perfect for that they're just, seriously, if you're going to do barbecue, you should not be without yeah. one of those. And look at that. that. That's already about 10 years old. It's been thrown around. We leave it out in the winter. Look at it. Still nearly as good as the day it was bought. And that's going to last another 10 years, I reckon. Just brilliant. OK, so we, we can literally walk away from that now, oh, yeah. can't we? Leave it. Let it get right. on with it. Well, let's have a little look at what we've got here then. So um, while that's doing its thing, uh, all we need to do is get on with this. So uh, a couple of things. I've got a tray here. I've already got some celery, carrots and onions in there. I'm just going to put a few more in. As always... I do a lot of cooking, a lot of barbecuing. Yeah. If you're going to do anything, get yourself yeah. a decent knife. So again, this is a flint and flame knife. This is what's called a seven and a half inch Santoku. It's a bit like a chef's knife, but it's got a bit more of a rock on it. Yeah. And it's uh, an absolutely beautiful knife and super sharp. So I've got a couple of uh, carrots and bits of celery here. So all I need to do here, this is, there's no finesse involved in this. It's just give it a bit of a rough chop, chuck them in. There's no, there's nothing difficult about this at all. We'll get a couple of carrots in there. Again, always keep your fingers tucked away underneath. 
don't rush this part. You wouldn't want to uh, cut your fingers with that knife, would you? It's too no. th yeah, there's, there's this thing. It's a genuine truth. Um, a sharp knife is a safe knife. Yeah. And in the unlikely event that you're going to cut yourself, what's better is to have a clean cut. Yeah. Because a clean cut will heal a bit better. But if you just do something sensible like this, this is a, a nice little tip for you if you're cutting anything. When you've got your fingers, little claw, bring them in like that, and then that way you'll see that this part of the knife it's is, on, the back is, on, the, is yeah. on that part of your fingers and then for you're not going to cut anything. And just pay attention, okay? And it's very, very simple, okay? So we'll put those in there. I've got a mix of red onions and white onions. Nice yeah, little flavour contrast. Yeah, really good flavour. One thing we'll do as well, I always like to do a little, uh, a little knife sharpening exercise. Loads of people have knives at home and even a good knife need sharpening, yeah. okay? Particularly after you haven't sharpened it for quite some time. So this little bit of kit here, this is a, a ceramic sharpener. And there's a little ceramic wheel in there, a little bit of water, yeah. and the wheel moves backwards and forwards along with a knife. And it's set at 18 degrees, which is the optimum kind of sharpening angle. And I'm gonna show you how hard it is to sharpen a knife, okay? So here we go. Put your fingers on. Now I'm not putting any particular downward pressure on this. I'm just kind of letting the weight of the knife do the How work. How simple that is. That's it. Is that it? Yeah, you're done. And what you should be doing, if you do a lot of cooking... Don't be surprised if that's missing by the end of this <laughs> demonstration. This is such a fantastic <laughs> bit of kit. They're just brilliant. Um, so that's that. We've got our knife sharpened. Um, and what we're going to do now, we're going to move on to the pork. Okay. So again, nice sharp knife. Got this lovely bit of pork. Um, we said earlier it was Ivor and John at G Pickett Family Butchers. Yeah. And I just love They're the They're great butchers, they really just are. Just round the corner. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now, you don't want to spare the horses on this. There's a big bit of uh, skin there, and you're going to really need to get all the way through it, or almost all the way through. So just get that and really draw your knife in. If you need to do it a couple of times. But also the great thing with this, Andrew, is that this is a cheap joint, isn't it? It's, yeah, not, for, it's for the, not expensive for the size of it. Yeah, exactly. Now, this, this, is a kind, this is only a kind of three and a half, four kilogram piece. Well, can you imagine how many people you could feed with this? Yeah. You know, it's... And, there's, and this is the other thing. I love a burger. I absolutely love a really good burger, maybe chuck steak, that kind of thing. But do you know what? If you've got a bar beautiful barbecue like this, get something big in it. Yeah, definitely. Do some proper yeah. barbecue, yeah, you know. Definitely. And it's really, really simple. It's, we're doing a little bit of prep now. And like I said, and I'm, you can see I'm making sure that I'm really getting that skin opened up yeah, all the way. Yeah. This is the bit you want to take a little bit of time. And again, you'll notice that my fingers, I've still got them in like this. Yeah. The knife is coming this way. My fingers are not in the way. That is going to make super crackling, isn't it? Exactly, it? yeah. And what I might do this time, normally I'll just do score this way, but I think for a bit of fun, what we'll do is we'll score it the other way yeah, as well. And we'll get some nice yeah. little kind of square bits going. Now, this will take a little bit of time, so we'll just keep doing this. One of the things that I think is beautiful about barbecuing, you can go anywhere with it, can't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to do yeah. a fairly simple rub today on this one. I'm going to use one of Weber's amazing. They've got three different rubs here. I'm going to use one of them. It's the kind of herb rub they do. Lovely bit of oregano, bit of garlic, salt, pepper. There's a little touch of demerara sugar in there as well. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of sweetness. That sweetness yeah. yeah, so I'm just going to go with that. If, you've, if you're kind of new to barbecuing, yeah. just use something like that. Yeah. Later on down the line, as you get kind of more proficient, we've got people making lovely Asian spice rubs. They're doing beautiful Indian rubs. All sorts of different things, you know, Persian spices you can get in there. You can do all sorts of different things. So the sky's the limit, really. But we're going to start, you know, fairly, fairly simply here because... And it's worth spending the time doing this, doing this to get this crackling right, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely. this crackling is going to be perfect. I mean, but for me, this is part of the fun of it. Yeah. You know, well, this, is, not? this is the idea. Uh, and we'll have a really good time doing this. God, that's looking really good, isn't it? Exactly. Do you know what? It's worth spending a few minutes doing this. Yeah. And just really have a bit of fun with it. I love this part of it. It's really lovely. Okay, so last little one there. Just make sure you get that skin really, really nicely. Nice little groove in there. There we go. That's what we want. That knife really cuts into it, doesn't it? I it mean, does. I mean, the, the skin is pretty tough, you know. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. do need a nice, good, sharp knife for that. Now, what we're going to do next. Now, this, as you can see, we've still got the bone in. Yeah. Uh, to be honest... Is horses, of course, yeah. bone in, bone out, it's yeah. up to you. Um, I don't want to mess about with anything particularly, so I'm going to get the bone in, and later on you'll see when we've cooked this, it'll just fall yeah. off. Yeah. So next thing, uh, I've got some lovely rapeseed oil here. Um, 
I'm a huge fan of rapeseed oil for several different reasons. The first one is, is that it's a wholly British product. Yeah. It's, you'll see the fields everywhere, and it's a fantastic, really, really great product, and we should all be using it to support all the British farmers. And look, I mean, look at the colour of it. It's a beautiful colour. That's the first thing. I've never thing. used it before. I've always Honestly, used olive oil. Right, so but, I love olive oil. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but here's another reason why you should use rapeseed oil when you're barbecuing. Rapeseed oil has got a massively high smoke point. Oh, right. So it is very, very difficult to burn it. Whereas olive oil, you can actually burn it quite easily yeah, if you're no, not I've careful. That, yeah. And then yeah. you get that slightly bitter yeah. taste. Yeah. Well, you won't get that with this. So that's uh, another great reason to use it. And uh, of course, another reason, it's about half the cholesterol of olive mm. oil. And uh, that's, that's, that's some health points. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, Russell, but there you go. So look, we've got some rapeseed oil on that, okay? Um, we talked before about, you can go as far as you want with this. Oh, yeah. When you're a bit more proficient, you can start using all sorts of spice rubs. You can make your own. It's, yeah. it's a great fun to do it. But if you're just starting out, there are plenty of great rubs oh, out yeah, there. Yeah. So we've got three here. This is a pepper blend that Weber make. Black, white, green, and red bell peppers. That's one of them. This one, American barbecue, sea salt, tomato, garlic, and a load of other spices yeah. as well. But today, what we're going to use is this one. This is the herb salt. So sea salt, rosemary, garlic, and oregano, yeah. or oregano, if you're oregano. from America. But the, the salt is really going to bring that flavour out, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a nice bit of salt. I may even put a touch more just on the top say, of that skin. I was going to say, I always put plenty of salt yeah. on the skin. So again, just get this. Now, we've got the rapeseed oil on, and this is the other reason for using the rapeseed oil. Let's do the bottom first. Okay. And I'm going to get kind of pretty much half of this on the bottom and half on the top. And what the rapeseed oil does is it kind of, if in effect, keeps the herbs on the meat because you don't oh, want you that. You can smell those herbs, yeah. don't you? Lovely. I mean, it's gorgeous. Right. And that, seriously, this is not yeah, difficult, no. okay? And that's, I mean, that really is, that is. Oh, yeah, that's no, good. It's absolutely brilliant. We've got proper sea salt in there as well. So that's on the bottom because we don't want the bottom to be neglected. And then what we'll do, we'll sprinkle... Those big chunks of salt as yeah, well. That's exactly. going to be lovely in that meat. And the rest of that on there. And then we'll get the old fingers in there and work that all in. That's it. And start getting all that in there. Make sure you try and get it down in amongst all these little grooves as well. It's amazing the colour it's changing it, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. giving a nice colour to it as well. Exactly. And it's the rapeseed oil on it is just superb. Also, in the ingredient, you'll notice there's a little bit of demerara yeah. sugar in here. So that's raw, unrefined demerara sugar. A little bit of sweetness. Look at that, there we go. Let's get all of that on there. And give it a really good rubbing. Make oh, sure you get that. that everywhere. Perfect, absolutely perfect. And this is another thing I really like. And then look, move that over so you get everything you can on there. Okay, right. We've got a couple more minutes ready for this chimney started to be emptied out. Look yeah, at so we can now start seeing the flames coming up, can't 15 we? 15 minutes and you've just, just started to see the flames come up. Brilliant. And the, often the question we get asked on this is, when is it ready? When, it's, when, you, when you're just going that sort of silvery gray, that's the time to start transferring. Perfect. Don't let it go too far. So we're all good here to go. Yeah. Last thing, we've got this. Again, I'm on a bit of a British thing at the moment. So It's great. There's nothing wrong about that. So I've got this. Uh, I mean, this is delicious. This is uh, Henny's Dry Cider. Now, we're not, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just nice cider. Are, Are we going to get paid or not? Well, I don't know, but we have got a few more. We said this, but we'll have a, a yeah. drink in a minute. So here's another nice thing. Ready? Just get all that Oh, look there. at that. And what we're oh, going to do... you can smell it as well, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh. I mean, look, this is the thing, isn't it? Look, pork and apple sauce. Yeah. We're going to do this lovely pork belly and a cider gravy. Yeah. I mean, what could be better than that? Brilliant. Exactly right. Now, what's going to happen here is we're going to get this lovely bit of pork. I'm going to plonk that straight on there. I mean, look at that. <laughs> if you only just got that in there. I mean, that, that's good, isn't it? Now, look, waste not, want not. Last little bit there. Get all that on there like that. Now already, no, we haven't even cooked this yet. No. But already, smell of that cider. You can, you can, you can smell it, can't you? You could just smell yeah. it. Yeah. And what's, what's going to happen here is we're going to put this. We talked about doing indirect, didn't we? So we're going to have a setup of our coals on either side of the barbecue. This is going to go right in the middle. The lid will go on, yeah. and what we're going to do is we're going to get this kind of convection effect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not direct heat under here. But what's going to happen is, as this all starts cooking, all those juices start going down into the onions and the carrots and the celery, at the same time, that cider is going to start to evaporate yeah. slowly and all that steam's going to go up into the pork. It's going to be that slow cook, isn't it? Which exactly. Is what, it's, what it's all about. And this is what we're on about. Yeah. High heat first to get this crackling going, then we'll reduce it down and we'll walk away for three to yeah. four hours 
and we'll come back when we why, just have a quick look around again. If and you that's pass it. us those gloves, then we'll just get these uh, okay. briquettes pulled. Now, now these, uh, these are awesome. I, I've got uh, the the mitts, which are fantastic. Yeah, they're good. But when they brought these out, not as is, good as these. This is a whole other thing, yeah. now, isn't it? I I love the mitts, but you've got more control, and especially with this. As long as you've got this on the inside on your palm, then it's going to be perfect. And this part, this is that silicon Kevlar, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's really, you know, you know, people always say, oh, we're going to burn my hands or anything, but this is, these are fantastic. I'll tell you an interesting little story about these. When they came out, and I've obviously got some now, um, my wife's mother um, is a fantastic cook. But as she's got a little bit older, she's discovered that when she's using oven gloves, that she finds it a little bit difficult, it's a little bit more difficult to get the kind of the grip that she needs and the kind of tactility because it's a big mitt, right? Yeah. This is like a standard pair of oven yeah. gloves. I bought her a pair of these for Christmas, okay? She absolutely loves them because she's got, because it's proper finger she's gloves. She's got the control. She's yeah. got the control. It's really, really safe. She literally, that is it. She will never go back now. Yeah. They're just brilliant. I mean, absolutely, absolutely fantastic thing. So I can see right, now we've so kind of got these flames kind of really coming up there. So there's your front handle and then you simply pour these in. Don't worry about the few odd sparks. My new shirt on. And this, this is what's great about this. you can this. see it. Look at the yeah. colour of that. It's... it's pouring out there. And you, you can pour it exactly where it needs yeah. to go. Look at that. Just superb. And you just pour half each side and away you go. Just pour the rest of them in here. And if you get the odd little runaway, big pair of proper barbecue tongs. Yeah. The main, that to main one thing side. is remember this is hot. Yeah. So from a health and safety point of view, always make sure this is put away safely. And, and then, this, this is a really important thing, isn't it? I think one of the the places some people go wrong, uh, and I, I certainly know this from friends that I've had to teach, they get the idea of, in fact, they don't understand the idea of direct and indirect heat, no. do they? No, they certainly don't. And especially when you're cooking chicken legs and things like that, that's where indirect heat is absolutely brilliant because you've not got it directly over the top and yeah. you can always transfer over. Now, there's my faithful old grate. And now that, as you, as you can clearly is, see. It's pretty minging, I'll be honest. <laughs> It never, get, it, it never gets clean. My wife always has a heart attack when she looks at this. But in two minutes, when I've got this lid back on, yeah. get it up to maximum heat, and that will clean off easily. Exactly. And whilst we lift that lid up, oh, yeah, yeah. did you know why this is here? Well, I, I do, but loads of people don't, do they? Yeah. Including people who've owned these for several years. Yeah. That is the hook where you simply place... Show them, Andrew. Right, it's so, so simple. Th th this is how simple it is. And uh, it does make me laugh how many people don't realise this. There's the little hook. So rather than putting on this on your grass and yeah. making a nice burn ring, simply put it like that and, and do that. Yeah, and you always know where the hook is because it's right by the vent. Exactly, so you, you know you, where you you're going to go. Just, you just can't go wrong. So, so anyway, we'll get the lid on. We'll stick that lid on there. And we're going to watch that temperature shoot right up. And that, we'll bring that's, that one, yeah. That's going to take yeah. probably two or three minutes because yeah. the coals are very hot. And you can see straight away the temperature's coming up and it's going to come up very quickly. You oh, can yeah, see that's, that temperature that's gauge. really starting to go and up already. Those coals have only been on for 15 minutes. Yeah. Now, if anything, I could have left them in there for a couple more minutes, but yeah. I'm keen to, to uh, start cooking that pork. Exactly. Now, so, so why that? Look at that. We've, we've, we're less than, less than five seconds. We're already running up to about 250. 250. It's amazing, it's, isn't it? It's creeping up very, very quick. Now, we'll leave we... that on there for two or three minutes and then we'll get our tea brush out and we'll away clean we go. That great. Yeah. Now, just while we're doing that, uh, I've got to have a few words about this uh, background we've got here. Isn't it brilliant? This little gazebo is something else, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah, absolutely, absolutely stunning. Brilliant. Absolutely and, brilliant. and this is where you have loads of your customers, they come in and they actually cook here, don't they? Oh, yeah, we use all the barbecues here. And, you know, we even had a customer who wanted to, uh, to cook a leg of lamb. So we said to him, right, all you've got to do is swim over that river. And there's the sheep over there. <laughs> So like, but he couldn't catch one, fortunately. So you bought one instead. So we had to go and buy one. But, so he then came back to cook his leg of lamb, and he actually cooked it on the big summit. And we, we use this summit all the time as well. It's mm. beautiful when you're doing rotisserie and things like that. But this is the, this is the whole point of this, isn't it? The barbecue centre is here, yeah. so that if you're a little bit worried, never done it before, you can come and have a go on all of these barbecues, yeah. so you know which one to buy for you. Yeah. And it's perfect. It's brilliant. Absolutely I have perfect. also noticed that we've got a couple of llamas over here as yeah, well. Yeah, and a baby. It's just, just sitting over there in the field. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I must admit, I've never had llama. No, no. I am I. intrigued. I know, but could we get away <laughs> with it? <laughs> so, we're, anyway, we're, we're already up to 400. 
and it's literally it's just climbing as we think you can feel yeah. the heat coming out of yeah. that it's in the heat coming off of these briquettes are incredible and that's why i always say don't whatever you do buy the cheap briquettes yeah. every time we get a question we get lots of questions through youtube i bought a barbecue it's not performing it's not cooking yeah. right and i go straight to the source charcoal where's yeah. the charcoal come from yeah and Who if made they it? say where's it from i bought it from a local store and it's not Weber. That's your problem. Forget about it. Um, you've got a bag here. This is what's in there. Um, so, particularly these, for what we're doing here, we want to do a low and slow cook, yeah. a good four hours or so. Yeah. Now, we're pretty much going to be good to do this with one set of charcoal. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll cook that, no problem at all, with that charcoal. Yeah. Now, if you were to buy a cheap make, you would need to top that up at least three or four times. Mm. You're lifting and changing your temperature all the time. Every time the and lid comes off, the temperature yeah. goes down. And whilst you're looking, you're not cooking. Yeah. And that's really important. Yeah. And I learned that from one of the Weber guys. So <laughs> he's going he's gonna to be annoyed that I'm using that. But it's actually <laughs> very his, true. You've got his catchphrase now. <laughs> yeah, I love that's it. That's right. So we're up but, to 500 now. So we're, we're really, the, the heat has increased really, really quickly. And I'm just going to give that about another 30 seconds. And then I'm yeah. ready to clean that grate off. But the answer is... Get the right coals, yeah. and I can't really push that some of, some of the other coals that you can buy have got interesting chemicals in them, binding agents, mm. this kind of yeah. stuff. Now, you're talking about if you start cooking too soon, that's interesting things going on your food. Yeah. Well, there's none of that with this, is it? No. This is no. literally briquettes and yeah. nothing else. No, that's right. I don't exactly. like cooking things with chemicals. Yeah. It's, not, it's not my... Right, we're ready for this, you know? Okay, so I'll do the there's lid. My... I mean, look at that. That's literally a couple of minutes, 500 yeah. degrees. Yeah. Amazing. And just what we want. Now, Get remember my, we... Uh, so this is where the hook is, because yeah. it's by the vent. So, s simply do this, and you can see that is just coming off of there. And you can see the little bit of smoke coming off of the side there, where the bits are dropping off. I mean, at the point where you've got 500 degrees Fahrenheit on there, no bacteria is surviving that no, now, is no it? No chance, no chance. And also the other thing is, because you're cleaning that with that wire tea brush, Every, it's dry, isn't it? Oh, I mean, yeah. that's, that's a big mistake. People that try and clean their barbecue after no they fat. cooked. Look at it. It's, it's full of greasy fat. Would well, you know yeah. what? That fat protects the grate, doesn't it, for yeah. a start? Yeah. Just leave it and forget yeah. it. And also, if you're cleaning your barbecue after you've uh, just cooked, well, you're not sat down enjoying your food. No. And you're not having a beer. No. Well, that's not what barbecue's about, no, is it? No, not at all. And that, I'm always amazed that, you know, you go to, a, you, you go to someone's house mm. and they've cooked this beautiful meal and then, the, where is he? Oh, he's cleaning the barbecue. It was completely <laughs> pointless. Mad. Absolutely mad. Yeah. If you come here, sometimes we have mould about that thick on the top. And does it matter? No, it doesn't. No. And we've proved this. We cook time after time. And look at that grate now. It's clean. Yeah, absolutely You quite happy cook off that, and it's completely safe. So what and we're, we're gonna... straight back up to 300. Let that creep into 500, yeah. and we're, we're ready to go. Because we really want to blast this now, yeah. don't we, to yeah. get that crackling going, first of all. Yeah. Um, so the setup for the moment with the vents, how does that work on this? So the vents at the moment, we've got them full open. So open at the bottom and open at the top. So when we want to reduce our heat, we're going to just simply turn that and reduce the amount of air going through, and that will reduce our heat down. And we'll just check it on our temperature gauge. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's good to that's go. It. Yeah. And on the, on the bottom, that, is that pretty simple to, yeah, to close a, that? Yeah, got, you've got the vent here, which is quite simple. Yeah. And that vent also Perfect. acts as a cleaner. So, so to that, get rid of the ash. Yeah, and drop into the ash catcher. And it's beautiful <laughs> yeah. because, you, you know, the, the, that's the only disadvantage of the originals is that you can end up with the, ha the ash dropping onto the open pan and blowing all over the place, which yeah. is beauty with this. Yeah. You know, you don't get any problems. Yeah, so a, is, a day that's very still, no problem. Yeah. Just be a bit careful if it was a really windy yeah, day. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. We're now up to 500. We're ready to go. Excellent. Good stuff. So uh, what we'll do, I'll get this, Yeah. put it on, and then you get the lid back on. And again, as always, we're saying... Lid on, do what you need to do. Sorry, lid yep. off. Yep. Do what you need to do. Get your lid back on as yep. quickly as you can. Let's go with it. Now, that already looks good to me. Yep. But shall right. we go for it? Here we go. Now, again, I'm going to place that. Here we go. Coals either side. That's going to go right in the middle. So now we get that heat going across and back, and we get this kind of uh, convection yep. oven type effect. Now, half an hour? Half an hour at 500. To come back and have a look at that? Yeah. Then we'll have a beer and leave it for four hours and... Exactly. Oh, I've, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, so about 250 degrees Celsius. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to do. We do yeah. need to make that point. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's time for a cider.
Shall we wait for the offer? Well, let's I have don't a think sign. I can wait. No, go on, let's have a sign. <laughs> Andrew, this has been on the go for half an hour now. Yep. At about 500 degrees. And I can't wait any longer. Yeah, that, the good thing is we've had the courage to yep. not lift the lid and let that temperature go out. And that, that is a real important thing about barbecue. Oh, yeah. no, without You've a got shadow to have that. the courage to just yeah. leave it alone. As soon as you take that lid off, all the temperature goes. Yeah. So we've left it on. Get it off, Andrew. But this no. is the moment. We've got to get that I'll, lid off. I love this moment. Are you ready? Should <laughs> I do the honours? You certainly can. Here we go. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, my God. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yeah, look. Oh, that is perfect. Spot on. Now, this is why we got that temperature really high, because we wanted to really get this crackling going. And, we, and we're there. I mean, look at it. Already the smell's coming off that, that cider. You just want to eat yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely right. So, cheers. We've had a drink as well. Um, so, next thing, we now need to do the proper low and slow American yep. barbecue now. This is yep. what it's all about. Get that temperature down from 500 Fahrenheit, which is 250 degrees C. We want to get that right down now to about 3, 325 Fahrenheit. That's yep. about 140, 150 degrees. Yep. And then we'll low and slow that for a good couple of yep. hours now. And so, uh, lid back on, and yep. then. And what I would say about just reduce the vents by about half, top and bottom. And, and that should just about be right. And again, this is, this is how simple it is, isn't it? Yeah. All you've done there, you've restricted the amount of oxygen in, that'll just keep the, yeah. uh, the temperature down a bit. You see the temperature's dropping. It's, it, you know. And all you need to do is, we'll keep an eye on that, won't yeah. we? We'll make sure that we get it around 300, 325 yeah. Fahrenheit. Uh, and you can open up a little bit, close it a little bit yeah. until we get what we want. Yeah. So basically, again, now, again, this is for me the whole point about barbecue. We can now walk away from that for yeah. a three to four hours now. And we know that's just going to do its own thing, that low and slow and all those little connective tissues are going to start to dissolve and yeah. go into that lovely gravy we're going to have later on. So uh, let's go and finish our drinks yeah. uh, and we'll come back in what, three and a half hours, something like that? Yeah, I think so. Three, four hours, that'd be Perfect, fine. lovely. All right. Okay. Andrew, four hours later, yep. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Me too. The smells coming out of there are oh. amazing. Uh, key point, we've not touched it. We've nope. just, just left it. That's the whole point of yeah. this, isn't it? It's yep. really, really super easy. Okay, ready? Yep. Here we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Fantastic. And just look at that little... That, yep. that crackling is now perfect. Um, you've got the probe out. I certainly have. Very, very set important. Going. So we're looking for anything above 75 degrees, right in the thickest part of that meat. Yeah, we're 84 and still climbing, so that's that's cooked well. So we know that is absolutely safe to eat now. And I can yeah. see, obviously... Oh, yeah, definitely. It's very important. Always, every time you use that probe, it's very important. So little and antibacterial wipe, straight back in there. You're perfect job the next done. time. Okay, so... Look at how much coal's still left there. I mean, that's, yeah, that's still doing its four, thing, isn't four it? Four hours later. Incredible. And that's why you buy quality coal. Exactly. Or charcoal in this case. Something about the tongs. Now, earlier on, we didn't actually use the tongs to handle the meat. I just put it in and clean my hands. But let's just say that you had used the tongs to put the meat into this roasting dish, okay? What you had there was raw meat on that. So, little tip again, hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. Before I now handle this cooked meat, all I do is either give those a quick wash or, again, antibacterial wipe. Yeah. Just give them a clean. It's, it's the simplest thing. Yeah. Once you get used to it, and this, of course, is what you would be doing inside the house. Yeah. So you just do that outside. Okay, now, okay. you can see we've got a yellow board now. That's uh, the colour of the board for cooked meat. This is the slightly tricky bit, because this is such a big piece of pork belly. <laughs> we do have to be a bit careful here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get right under there with these massive... Look at how juicy that is. Tons. That is here we go. cooked to perfection. And I'm going to come in here. Now, this pork belly was on the bone. Doesn't really make much... Oh, now then. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, to get ready for the weight, because yeah. that is a big piece of pork oh, belly. Oh, look at that. Now. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's what it's all about. That is fantastic. Now, th the thing about this is, this hasn't been much work. No. Because we haven't done no. anything. We've no. just left it. What we do need to do, though, now, very, very important, we need to let this rest. Yeah. Good 20 minutes, half an hour, because this is such a big piece, okay? Uh, and all you do when you leave something to rest, get a nice bit of foil. Oh, the wind's picking up a little bit now. Yeah, it is, yeah. A bit later on in the day, sun's coming down. Just tuck that in there, like that. Perfect. Okay, now what's going to happen now is all those lovely juices, which are kind of a little bit tight at the moment, they're all going to start to relax, relax back into yeah. that. 20, 30 minutes time, we'll be good to go, and that will still be lovely and hot inside. Oh. 
Uh, now I that's not wait. all. I can't wait. We talked about doing a lovely side of gravy, didn't we? So yep. what we had in here, uh, as we knew from before, was uh, carrots, celery, onions, that lovely Hennessy dry oh. cider in there. And the, the smell smells are fantastic. And all fantastic. that steam has been going up into that pork as well. So all that flavor's in there. So what we're gonna do, we've got one of these saucepans. Now Weber make these again. In fact, do you wanna show how have this you, works? Have you seen these work? They're brilliant. Absolutely, Absolutely brilliant. fantastic. These handles, you just simply clip it in, push that down, and there you are. So you can put that on the barbecue. Take the handle off. Take the handle off, and away you go. And it has a frying pan and all sorts yeah, of things. Exactly. And, and we'll be using this in a minute. Now, look, yeah. look at that. So what we're going to do. Now I'll have is to scoop this very carefully because. And get all that lovely. Yeah. And what's amazing is it's, it's not oozing of huge amounts of fat, is it? I mean, it's. No, no. The fat has stayed in the meat. Exactly. And all crisped up on that. Uh, on that lovely Look at those well. vegetables, aren't they fantastic? So what I'll do now, if I I just, that... I'll put this down on our, on our little thing now, and I'm just gonna, what I'll do now, thank you very much, I'm gonna get, I, I don't like waste, Russell, no. so what I'm gonna do, do I? is get plenty of that in there. Now, all this has taken up all that flavor of that lovely pork. We won't do it, we've got a lot here, you get a lot of gravy yeah. out of this. Okay, let's is do that. fantastic? That. And I've reserved a little bit of that juice just in case we need a bit more. So let's leave that there for two minutes. Now, what we're going to do, this is a bit of fun. Now, let's say this was like a, an alternative Sunday lunch or something like that. That's, you've now got half an hour yeah. to get everything else ready. If you've got some mashed potato going, some lovely bit of carrots, honey glazed carrots, that kind of thing. So what I'll do now, stick blender. And I'm just going to start doing this. I mean, look, straight, those vegetables are so soft now. Yeah. They've had kind of four or five hours in there. I mean, how, I mean, what? This is Remember, so simple, isn't this it? This is a new shirt. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll give this a good go. And take your time with it. Don't rush. Yeah. You know, make sure you get every single part of that. Now, if this was me, because I'm quite chefy, what I would be doing now is I'll give this a really, really good blitz. Yeah. Then I would take a sieve. Uh, I think we've got one here. I take a sieve over another saucepan and I would put all of this through the sieve and I would get a wooden spoon and push it all the way through. And what that would do is that would just take out any little tiny lumps. And what you'll end up with is this super smooth gravy, yeah. okay? Look at that. Yeah. I mean, it really doesn't take long at all. I'm gonna, I'll give it a really good go because I want to make sure we don't get any big lumps in there. But do you know what? The question is, it's up to you, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if you want to go to that, that kind of extra effort, then please do. Now, if you put those on for me, this is blitzed up, it's gone quite thick. Yeah. So I reserved some of that, that liquid, that lovely yeah. cider. So what we'll do is we'll put a bit more in there. And that way, what will happen is, we'll just get this to the right consistency. Yeah. Okay. And seriously, this will be plenty. I mean, that joint there, I mean, you, you could get 10 people out of that, no problem. And this gravy as well, again, you'll get a good 10 people out of that. Lovely, so if I get this, I'll stop any more of that coming in. So I'm just looking for a bit more of the liquid now. There we go. Hey, and you know what? Don't waste it. You could serve this up as well, couldn't you? Oh yeah, on the side. I mean, it's perfect, isn't it? Now, if you thought that had a good aroma now, just yeah. have a little. Oh, dear. Yeah, I just can't wait to eat this. And what's happened is, most of the fat has, has, has kind of either gone through the yeah. meat, we've got that lovely crackling now, crisped up beautifully, but a little bit of that fat will have dripped through, that's flavor. Yeah. Because we're blitzing it, it's emulsifying all yeah. that together, so now you get this really smooth, lovely sauce, or this lovely gravy. Now, funnily enough, I, I did this a couple of weeks ago, I had a couple of friends of mine come over from Florida, they live in Sarasota. Now, so they're American, they know their barbecue. So I was taking a big risk by yeah. doing something like this with, this with this gravy. This is not normally what they would do. They came over, the pork they loved because it was just good. But when they had some of this, they were blown away. And Americans, at the moment, I've got to say, Americans are, are much better at barbecue than we are in this yeah. country. But that's what we want to change, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, definitely. We're not going to be far behind them. There we go. Now I think that's going to do. Now again, as I said to you, if you wanted to go the extra mile, what you could do there now 
is you could take that, pass that through a sieve, and you will get a super smooth, beautiful gravy. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. Look at uh, that. Where should we put those? Let's put those over there for the time being. There we go. And here's the other nice thing. This is the next thing. You mentioned this. I'm going to get these gloves. I'm going to take our tray out. We've got our coals now. Um, I'm pretty low. I'll put that there. This is exactly what you said. We want to keep that gravy warm because we've got another 20 minutes to wait here, haven't yep. we? So I'll put that there. Take my glove off. There That's we it. go. It's quite simple. And what I'm going to do, I'll put that lid back on, but now I'm going to take the opportunity to shut these vents down. Yeah. Because it's perfect. Because That's going to keep hot on there. Shut them down so I can maximise on those coals which are still there. And that's going to be shut down. No oxygen. No. And that's going to starve it. And I'll still get about 40 to 50% of those coals back again. Outstanding. So that, that's the job done. So basically, next thing is uh, we'll set ourselves up. And yep. oh, I cannot wait to get no, into this. No, nor can I. OK. So we've probably got a good 20 minutes to wait. Oh, now. yeah. Easily. So yeah. I think uh, time for another bit of cider. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll come back Have in 20 minutes. Have you got any left? Uh, just a little bit, I think. OK, we'll come back in 20 minutes. All right. Oh, yes. Yes, I've finished. Let's that's, see if it's ready. Well, that's rested for 20, 30 minutes now, so that's perfectly ready to go. So um, let's get the gravy out. And this is where this Weber holder comes into its own. Look at that. And I'll chuck that on yeah. in there. Look at that. I mean, already. OK, that's one thing. Let's have a look at the next bit. OK, uh, there we go. Let's get that off. I mean, there we go. And this is not taking any work, really. Yeah. Um, done a couple of things. And then what we've done is we've just let it do its own thing in the barbecue. Let the barbecue yep. do all the work. So, okay, let's get in there. Nice sharp knife again. Uh, and I think there's nothing for it. All you need to do is li right, listen to this. Oh, unbelievable. Look how moist that is. Superb. Now, I've got this on the bone. Oh, my word. Look at that. That's <laughs> just to die for. Absolutely to die for. Now look, little uh, little chef's prerogative there. Yeah, You're gonna I've got, that I've bit got there. to try that. I've got. And let's just. Mm. I mean, just look at this. Look how much juice is coming off that. Mm. That is absolutely superb. Now this was on the bone. Sometimes, if you want to, you can get your your butcher to do it off the bone, mm. and that's absolutely fine. You know, what, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Um, but let's just... That literally is just falling off the bone, isn't it? It's that just... Is just... That is just what you want, isn't it? I mean, look at that. Don't worry about it too much. Now, how, what would it be like on a Sunday if you walked in with this on a big yeah, platter? Fantastic. This is what we're going to have today, everybody. we we'll do another couple of slices there and just pull that off like that. And it, it's... It's not been hard work to produce no, this, is it? It's, no. it's very, very simple. Just a little bit of time and leaving it. Leaving it to do the job it's meant to do. And I, you know, late, I'd be getting all this off. Yeah, so would I, so <laughs> I would I. I mean, let's just look at In that. In fact, I mean, I'll look, be sucking on that later on. Look at that. Yeah. It's just literally, just literally kind of falls off. Yeah. Just pull that out. That. Perfectly clean. How lovely is that? I mean, this for me, this is the fun part now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we'll get all that in there. Let's do another, what, another couple of slices. Now, you've had a little taste by itself. Uh, not good? Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So let's get that like that and just put that. You know, you don't have to be too fancy with any of this. Got a bit of carrots in there. Look at that. We'll do one more. Can you imagine that with mashed potato, the veg, yeah. and that, that gravy is, is really going to finish it off. Absolutely. And let's just do that like that. And to be quite honest, Andrew, you could almost just eat that on its own because that is going to be so lovely. Exactly. And look, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. If I look turn that. that around. Now look, this is, you get all this lovely crackling. And you know, and when you get that really high temperature at the start, that's what's so important, get that yeah. really high temperature to get this going. We'll leave that there. And what I'll do is I'll get a little piece for us here now. And what we'll do is we'll just get a couple of bits like this and maybe because it's still very, very hot, of course. What we'll do is we'll do a couple of little tasters just yep. by itself. Okay, little fork. I'm just gonna do that piece there. Oh, that crunch. You can taste that cider, can't you? Mm. All the way through that meat. That is, and the salt. Yeah. The peppers are coming through. 
I mean, which one would it be used this one? This was the herb salt, sea salt, mm. rosemary, garlic, and oregano, okay? Couldn't be simpler. Bit of the rapeseed oil to get it on there. Mm. Lovely crunch. Now, next thing, if I do this, again, fantastic knife yeah, to make sure brilliant. that this works. Take another piece now. That's good by itself, okay? Just dip that in there and then have another go. My God. That. No, I've never done that. That. What a chip. Mm. Andrew. That is fantastic. Yeah, I don't, I don't like well, waste. That is a fantastic gravy that you can make there. Mm. And as an accompaniment, this on a plate, bit of mashed potato, some nice veg, some like honey glazed carrots. And then of course, this is the other nice thing about this. You've got a little pourer there. Yeah. You put it in a jug if, you, if you're inside, but otherwise, yeah. do you know what? Why don't we do a bit? Yeah, let's, pour, do that let's pour it so, over the top. Have a little bit. I'm sure the this. camera crew will be tucking into this a little later on. Look at that. There we go. How about that? That, that is on your plate. Yeah. No fuss, no mess. The flavour in there is just something else, yeah. isn't it? And look, we hardly touched it. You'll get 10 people out of that, no yeah. problem. Brilliant. Andrew, absolutely superb. Absolutely superb, as always. See you next time.